Wood elves are elves who live in harmony with the forest and the magical beings within. Although lightly armored, they are able to move quickly and strike at foes from far away, while relying on the trees themselves to slow their enemies. The ancestors of the wood elves migrated to the heartwoods to find a new home as human tribes had begun to encroach on their ancestral lands. Here they met the tree lords, powerful beings who dwelt in the heartwoods, and the two forged a pact. The elves would protect and nurture the forest, never harming it without need, and in exchange, the tree lords would protect and provide for them. Today, we will look at the tree lords, majestic and terrifying monsters of the dark forests. Hey everybody, it's Warboss Fitz, and today we are going to look at the tree lords. Now this was going to be the wood elves, but I feel like it'd be disingenuous if I said wood elves and you all showed up to just a bunch of trees and no scantily clad wood elves running around. This is entirely brought on by me watching the march of the ants in that one tree man who's on fire diving into the wave of water. Godspeed, Twiggy boy. All the models in this video are brought to us by Clay Beast Creations. This is not a sponsored video, but, you know, if I go through my mini factory and I find things that are really cool, I'll make an army out of them, and this is one of those cases. So let's start off with the special rules. Battle call. Whilst inside, terrain, or in cover, this model and its unit get plus one to hit rolls in melee or shooting. Pick one. Breath attack. Once per activation before attacking, roll one die. On a 2+, plus, one enemy unit within 6 inches in line of sight takes one hit with Blast 3 and AP 1. We're not going to see this anywhere in the army because I'm pretty sure this is just for the forest dragon, which the trees don't ride on. Eagle-Eyed shoots at quality 2+, plus. again, not for the trees. Malice, enemies get minus 1 to hit in melee when attacking units where all models have this rule. Monster Hunter, this model gets AP plus 2 in melee against units where most models have toughness 3 or higher. Protector, this model and its unit gets plus 2 to defense rolls whilst inside terrain or cover. War Dance, when in melee, roll 1 die and apply 1 bonus to models with this rule. 1 to 3, the attack gets rending, and on a 4 to 6, attacks get AP plus 1. Warning Cry, enemy units can't be set up within 12 inches of this model when using Ambush. And Wild Hunt, this model and its unit get ambush. Now, a lot of these special rules are not gonna apply to the tree men or the tree lords in this case, because honestly, they don't need them. They're just really scary trees. But they are magical trees, so we're gonna go over the spells. Spirit Vines, one, target enemy unit within 18, it gets minus one to hit roll next time it fights in melee. Tree Stomp, one, target enemy unit within nine, it takes one hit with AP two and deadly three. Harmony 2, target two friendly units within 12, they get flying next time they activate. Insect Attack 2, target two enemy units within 9, they take 4 hits each. Harvest 3, target enemy model within 12, takes 3 hits with AP 4. And Regrowth 3, target two friendly units within 18, get regeneration next time they take wounds. So let's go over here. Spirit Vines giving the enemy minus one to hit at power one is a very, seems to be very strong. If you could just throw that out there for nearly no cost. So that'll be something if your friendly caster doesn't have anyone in range to blast with anything, throw that out there at the enemy. Tree Stomp seems to be a standard high damaging attack that most armies have. Harmony, where you give two friendly units flying. The whole army has Strider. The only thing I can really see that being used for is if you're already up in the enemy lines, giving them flying gives them the ability to kind of jump over the enemy and charge them from behind. Insect attack is again a nice little damaging spell you could throw out. Got to be kind of close to do it though. Harvest again is another typical magical attack we see. This one is going to be a high armor penetration attack. And regrowth giving two friendly units regeneration all the way at power three. Seems like you're putting a lot of magical power into something that before 3.2 might have been better for you. But is what it is. We'll see what we could do on the table. So let's go ahead and start with the units. Again, everything I'm going to show you is made by Clay Beast Creations. And here we can see that with our first unit, which is the Tree Men. Ten of them for 90 points. Quality 5 and Defensive 5. They each get one attack with their heavy claws. And they have Furious and Strider. The unit has no upgrades. 
So just being a base unit for the army, even though in the Wood Elves, this would be more of a specialist unit, but when we're just running the Tree Lords, this is gonna be your bog standard infantry for them. Quality five with Furious and Strider, along with an AP on their attack is amazing. These guys are gonna be able to pump out more damage than you think they should be able to because half of their attacks are gonna explode with Furious and that AP is gonna be able to push them that much harder. On to our next relatively smallish tree unit. We get the tree revenants, five of them for 95 points, quality four, defensive five, two attacks apiece with rending, and they have malice and strider. And malice is the, the enemy is minus one to hit them when all models in this unit have this rule. Now here we get to some upgrades. You can give them all magic weapons, taking away the rending and giving them AP one for minus five points, or you can give them all short bows with one attack and rending, and one attack with a claw for five points. You can upgrade all of them with flying for 10 points, and you can give them a sergeant, a musician, and a banner upgrades, since this is the first time we've run into it here. Sergeant means one model in the unit gets plus one quality when it attacks. Musician means that the squad moves one extra inch, and banner means that the squad gets plus one to its quality on morale checks. Now where these guys get two attacks apiece with the rending, this would be what I would consider kind of a blender unit, running forward and attacking the enemy with quite a few attacks. And now in 3.2, I would rather have the rending over the AP1 because if you run into anybody with regeneration, the rending just removes the regeneration roll. Now we're on to the bigger boys, Tree Man Brutes, three of them for 120 points, quality four, defensive five. They each have three attacks apiece at AP1. Furious, Strider, and Toughness 3. Here comes the trees with some toughness. So these guys are going to be able to take some hits. And with Furious and Strider, they're going to be able to get where they need to get. And with their exploding attacks, they're going to be able to do some damage. Three Man Hunters is our next unit. Three of them for 180 points. Quality 3, Defensive 4. They start out with three great weapons for three attacks apiece at AP2 with Strider and Toughness 3. Now you'll notice between the Brutes and the Hunters, the Hunters do have a better quality, but you're also paying more points for it. Then you can upgrade them to replace the great weapons with a Psy, which gives them one attack at AP4 with Deadly 3 in case you really, really gotta kill some enemy tough units. Or you can give them a heavy bow for 24 inch range, three shots at AP1, and two claw attacks. Now the heavy bow is gonna be what I did with this unit because getting nine shots that hit on a three at AP1, I think is pretty darn good. A little bit expensive, but I have a feeling they're going to make their points back or at least make themselves known on the battlefield. Revenant Bug Riders, three of them for 185 points, quality four, defensive five, one poison attack each with toxin claws and one magical weapon attack at AP1. They're Flying Impact 2, Malice, Regeneration, and Toughness 3. You can upgrade all the magical weapons with a lance, and you can also give them the sergeant and the musician and the banner upgrade. These guys are not riding bugs per se, but with the models from Clay Beast Creation, if I was gonna run these guys, this is what I would run them as, the bug riders. Now, because they have flying and impact, I would definitely give them the lance because the lance gives them AP2. Impact only works when you charge. And because you're able to fly, you ignore all terrain whatsoever, you're probably gonna be the one that gets the charge off first. That's about all I gotta say about that. Now on to the biggest, oldest trees. The Tree Giant starts off at 270 points. Quality three, defensive three. Six attacks with branch weapons at AP2. Four attacks with a stomp at AP1. Fear two, Strider and Toughness 12. Fear 2 means that when you check to see who won combat, this guy automatically scores 2 points on that chart, regardless if he did any damage or not. You can replace the branch weapon with a whip root, which gives you a range of attack at 12 inches, 6 attacks, AP 1, and his branch strike goes down to just AP 6 with no AP. You can also upgrade him with Tree Man Ancient for Caster 2 or Master Tree Man Ancient for Caster 3. Now starting on characters, we have the Tree Man Elder. 30 points, quality five, defensive five. Three attacks at AP one with his heavy claw. Furious, Hero, Strider, and Toughness three. You upgrade the heavy claw with a Psy for one attack at AP four with deadly three, or a great weapon for three attacks at AP two. You can also upgrade him to be a caster two or a caster three. 
this unit does not have any upgrades that will affect his squad. So if you're just looking for something to give a squad a little bit extra punch, you could put this hero into that unit. But if you're looking for something to upgrade your units, we can go to our next character. We have the Revenant Elder for 50 points starting off. Quality four, defensive five, four attacks with rending claws. Hero, Malice, Strider, and Toughness three. Now for unit options, you can upgrade them with Stalk Master, which gives them Wild Hunt, which means the unit they're with gets Ambush. Forest Warden, which gives them Protector, which means this model and his unit gets plus two to defense rolls while inside terrain or cover. And you can also give it the Caster 2 or the Caster 3 option. Just having the ability of taking one of those Brute Squads or a Hunter Squad and giving it the ability to ambush behind somebody was too good of an opportunity to pass up. So I have one in the army that will be ambushing with a unit of brutes. As far as weapons go, you can upgrade them with a squirm fly, which gives them a 12 inch range attack for two attacks with poison, or a fury fly, an 18 inch range, two attacks with rending. You can also upgrade the model to have wings, which gives them ambush and flying, or give them a dryad horror which would give them defense plus two, toughness plus six, fear one, heavy claw for four attacks at AP two. What that's going to do is it is going to increase the size of the model up to near tree giant territory. And Clay Beast Creations has a lot of other cool tree man like models. I put what I could on the cards, but I'm going to put some other stuff on the screen here where you can see how you can make the Dryad Horror, where you make larger characters. You can have different options for your Brutes, Tree Men, and, and, and Revenants. He's got a whole line of, I think he calls them Forest Spirits, where it is different totem and Tree Men fusions. So my two characters, just to keep them separate from everything else, just so I know which one is the character, I made them out of the Owl Totems. So it'll be a Owl-headed Tree Man attached to the units. So once again, this is not a sponsored video, but one of the cases where I found something really cool and I just couldn't resist and had to get the files and make an army out of them. Honestly, it's been fun splitting the Wood Elf army pretty much down the middle, leading to the granularity of having the elves or the trees. This is one of those cases where restricting yourself leads to different opportunities that you might not have taken. And where one page rules is a model agnostic rule set, finding something you like the look of and just building an army with your own restrictions, the options are limitless. Let's go see some big trees try to kick the crap out of some cats. Hey everybody, welcome out to the garage. It is a balmy 24 degrees and I finally broke down and stuck a heater in here. At least right next to my head for now. So all we have is our army of tree lords. It's a very compact, smaller force because these guys are pretty expensive as far as points go. So let's go ahead and go over the units. Here we have a squad of one Revenant with six Brutes. This Revenant in this squad is the one that's going to give this Brute squad ambush. We have a second unit of six Brutes led by a Revenant. And this one has the Caster 2 ability. Our next squads are two squads of three hunters, all armed with great bows. Then finally, the big boy, we have a tree giant who is upgraded to be a caster level three. Their opponents today are going to be the victorious cat folk from last week's video. We're gonna see what kind of damage these cats can do to the trees. So this is our board setup for today. Once again, we are fighting in the jungle because I believe that's where you would find the tree men. Deployment is going to be frontline. On a suggestion from one of our subscribers in the last video, we are going to try out mission cards. The way the mission cards are going to work, whenever you score an objective, that mission card gets discarded. And also at the end of every turn, each team will be able to discard one mission card that they don't think they're going to be able to complete. Also, we're only running four objectives, so any capture or seize objective five just isn't going to exist. At the beginning of every turn, they draw cards to always have five cards in their hand at the beginning of the turn. 
I'll test this out and see what happens. Both armies are deployed. The tree lords look like they've just spread out their small number of units across the entire deployment zone, as much coverage as they can get. And the cat folk have deployed on the line, looking to be very aggressive again, looking to be very aggressive against the outnumbered tree folk, against the outnumbered tree lords. So we're gonna roll to see who goes first. Tree lords are gonna go first. These are the mission cards that each team are gonna start with. First activation with turn one. One of the units of hunters moves forward and levels their great bows at the kitten unit off in the distance. Firing off their tree trunk sized arrows, they're able to take out six of the kittens. The kittens then pass their morale test. The kitten unit that was shot at then moves forward on top of objective number two, scoring one point for the cat folk. The second unit of hunters move forward and jump on objective number three. They do not have a card for this and therefore don't score a point. They then level their bows at the primal saber tooth and fire off all their arrows. The saber tooth gets peppered with shots, but his armor is able to stop every hit. The saber tooth then runs forward, seeing that he's going to have to close the distance to these funny looking trees that are shooting twigs at him. The unit of brutes on the far left flank of the tree lords decide to sprint right through all the difficult terrain, completely unhindered because they have the strider rule. The revenant sees the saber tooth and casts tree stomp. The spell goes off and the saber tooth fails its armor save, taking three wounds. Second unit of kittens run around the bushes to set up behind the saber tooth. The tree giant moves forward towards objective number two and he tries to cast insect attack on the kittens on the objective he fails to pass the casting roll seasoned cat adventurers see the tree giant and decide he's just a giant scratching post run forward as fast as possible to block off the tree giant the cat shrine moves forward towards the center of the board it is able to send out its protection ability to both the kittens and the seasoned cat adventurers giving them plus one defense it then casts predator roar at the tree man giant the tree giant fails his armor save and takes him down to nine wounds remaining. The kitten ballista wanders over to the side, lines up a shot with the tree man giant, and fires. <laughs> Completely missing. The cats riding monkeys with their fast rule are able to snake around the bushes in front of them and reach the unit of brutes and revenant charging in with their lances. The monkey unit is able to pull off spectacular dice and kills off three of the tree man brutes. Tree man brutes pile in to fight. And with the low armor save of the cats on monkeys, they're able to kill all six members of the squad and put one wound on the cat chieftain on gorilla. The tree man brutes lost combat, but they passed their morale test. The unit of slingers move forward towards the tree giant their caster attempts to cast the same spell that the shrine did predator roar but is unable to cast it the slingers then rear back and fire off their stones at the tree man giant and are able to cause one wound last activation of the turn the beehive tossers using their strider rule move through the bushes onto objective number four and they find that three of the cats are in range to throw their beehives all because they consolidated into combat. They rear back and launch their beehives. One of the brutes goes down and another takes a wound. They then fail their morale test and are stunned. At the end of turn two, the tree lords decide to discard card number 45 of controlling three objectives because of their limited number of units on the board. They don't think they're going to be able to take three of them at once. They then roll up, seize objective number two. The cat folk last turn scored outmaneuver for one point. So they roll up two more cards. They get 46, control all objectives on the board, and 14, seize objective number four. First activation for the tree men. The beehive tossers are a prime target because their AP-1 blast weapons is definitely a problem for the tree men. So the brutes that just ambushed in charge into the back of the beehive tossers. 
absolutely eviscerating the squad with 12 wounds going through their armor save. The Dream Men Brutes take control of objective number four, and they score two points on Show No Mercy because they won a combat by more than six wounds. The Cat Adventurers decide that they're going to bite the bullet and charge into the Tree Giant. With their AP2 weapons, they're only able to put three wounds onto the Tree Giant. The Tree Giant then decides he is going to teach these kittens a lesson and attacks back. With the added defense from being fat and the plus one defense from the shrine, it's only able to kill six of the cats, but then they fail their morale test and they are pinned directly in front of the biggest, angriest tree on the board. The second unit of Tree Man Brutes is going to recover and remove their stun to marker. The Primordial Sabertooth charges into the unit of Hunters, sitting on objective number three. With his impact hits, he's able to score one wound on the Hunters. Then, with an unfortunate roll for his four attacks, he's only able to hit once, and it is not rending. The Hunters then pass their armor save. The Hunters, with their six attacks, attack back, hitting all six times, and the Sabertooth fails just enough armor saves to be taken off the board. The unit of hunters in the tree man's left center move towards objective number one on the left flank. They then level their giant bows at the kittens across the lake. Firing off three shots apiece, they're able to get six hits and five of the kittens go down. They then fail their morale test and are now stunned. The cat shrine, seeing that it's kind of boxed in by friendly units, decides that it's going to tell its little litter bearers to walk through the water. It then casts Primal Roar once again at the Tree Man Giant. And once again, the Tree Man Giant takes three wounds. He is down to two and passes his morale test. The Tree Man Giant activates and he casts Insect Attack on both the Cat Adventurers and the Slingers off in the distance. The spell is able to kill four Slingers and two Cat Adventurers. The tree giant then decides to attack the cat adventurers. Between its stomp and claws, it's only able to kill one because everybody's hitting out a six because everyone is fatigued. The cat adventurers attack back, unable to do any damage to the giant, and because they are already stunned, they automatically fail their morale test and run off the board. Slingers activate. The caster attempts to cast Primal Roar on the tree giant again and once again fizzles out as he rolls a two. The slingers then rear back and fire all of their slings at the giant, unable to penetrate the beast's armor. Last unit to activate for the tree men this turn are the hunters that were charged by the saber tooth earlier in the turn. They now see that they have clear line of sight to the kitten standing on objective two. They pull back their bows and pincushion every kitten sitting on that objective. This then scores them one point for card number 51. Next unit to activate for the cats is the Supreme Chieftain on Gorilla. He charges into the brutes that him and his cavalry unit were fighting last turn. Due to some bad dice rolling, he's only able to score one wound on the Tree Man Brute Squad. The brutes and the Revenant attack back, able to take out all five wounds left on the gorilla and removing it from the board. And with the three cat units killed in combat this turn, they score card number 66. Killing three units, they get two points. The remaining kitten unit on the board recovers from being stunned. Last activation of the turn, the kitten catapult pulls back on its giant rubber band and launches another coconut at the tree giant. This time it connects. The tree giant fails its armor save and goes down into a pile of wood chips. At the end of turn number two, the tree men decide to discard card number 32 to hold objective number two, and the cat folk decide to discard objective card number 13, which is seize objective number three. For turn number three, the tree men get to draw four cards. They continue holding on to their seize objective number two, they get Assassinate to kill an enemy hero, Giant Slayer, where they're going to have to try to kill the enemy Shrine, Tactical Perfection to take all objectives on the board, and lay them low to take out enemy units. The Cat Folk continue on with card 46, control all objectives, 
card 11 sees objective number one 32 hold objective number two then they then roll card 24 to seize objective four and card 45 to control any three objectives First activation of turn three, the tree men start out aggressive and launch their reduced squad of brutes into the difficult terrain of the lake to take on the shrine. The caster attempts to cast tree stomp and fails. The brutes and the revenant with their attacks are able to score four wounds onto the shrine. The shrine then turns to attack back. The shrine causes two hits. The brutes save one, but the other roll is a one. And with the Shrine's rule, it causes an additional wound to go through. So they lose two wounds. One Brute goes down, another one is wounded. The Shrine then has to take a morale test for losing combat, but it passes. The unit of kittens that were left on the board are able to move quickly through the underbrush to get back and stand on top of objective number two. The hunters on the left continue moving left until they reach objective number one. They then fire their bows into the back of the Shrine, causing one wound. The unit of Slingers pushes up, and the caster in the unit attempts to cast Primal Roar at the hunters standing on objective number one. Again, rolling a two and failing to cast his spell. The Slingers then rear back and fire off at those hunters, but the hunter's armor stops any damage going through. The second unit of hunters moves forward so they can all get line of sight of the shrine in the middle of the lake, and they fire. This time, the Shrine's armor completely abandons it, and it takes five wounds, but it passes its morale test. The Shrine activates and charges back into the Brute Squad that attacked it in the middle of the lake. It does it in such a way to where it can hand out the plus one defense to the Slingers and the Kittens that are standing on objective number two. It then casts Primal Roar on those same Brutes. They fail their armor save, taking out the last Brute and putting a wound onto the Revenant. The Shrine then with its impact attack does one wound onto the Revenant. Then with the rest of its melee attacks, it's able to take the final wound off of it. And for its consolidation move, it's able to wiggle itself out of the difficult terrain. Final activation for the Tree Lords. The large unit of Brutes are able to just make it to the Kitten Catapult. When they all show up, the Kitten Catapult stands no chance and is immediately broken apart. At the end of turn three, the tree men discard card number 46, Tactical Perfection, because there are more objectives on the board than they have units. The cat folk then discard card number 24 to seize objective four, because they just don't see that happening. At the beginning of turn four, the tree men roll for card number 61, Decapitate, which they have already destroyed the hero with the highest toughness, who was the Supreme Chieftain on the Gorilla. So they immediately score two points. The cat folk roll a 41 for the move out objective, which they immediately score because they have no units inside their deployment zone. At the beginning of the last turn, the cats see that they're in a very bad position. The scoreboard does not look like it's going to end in their favor, so they decide that they're going to go out with a bang. The kittens let out a mighty roar and charge into the unit of brutes that is coming up from the back. After all their attacks, that mighty roar looks more like this. And they only score one wound on the brutes. The brutes then attack back. I don't really need to explain what happened. Mostly because I don't want to be brought up on animal abuse charges. That brute squad then charges over the hedges into the slinger squad. Even with only hitting on a six, they're still able to take out four of the slingers. The slingers then attack back, but are unable to get through the armor of the brutes. They then fail their morale test and run off the board. The Brutes then consolidate towards objective number two, contesting it from the only model remaining for the cats on the board, the Shrine. The Shrine then activates and charges into that Brute squad, casting Primal Roar. It's able to pop one of the tree Brutes. With its impact hits, it's able to do one wound, but the Brutes roll a one. That means it causes two. And then with the rest of its melee attacks, it's able to cause an additional four wounds, meaning that it takes two of the brutes out. The brutes then attack back with their number of attacks are able to take one wound off the shrine, taking it down to one wound remaining, but they lose combat and pass their morale test. Being the only units left on the board to activate both unit of hunters 
draw back their bows and fire into the shrine. They're able to cause eight wounds, meaning the shrine goes down, leaving not a single catfolk model on the board. So at the end of turn four, the tree men score objective 64, assassinate for taking out the caster inside the slinger squad. They score giant slayer for taking out the shrine, leading us to the end of the game. The final points total, tree men 11, cat folk three. This seems to be a case of the cards definitely coming out in one army's favor over the other. It did add some more dynamic moments into the game, so we will continue to use the cards moving forward. So that'll do it for Out in the Garage today. The results from our poll from last week, it looks like we're going to have a Tree Man versus Lizard Man battle next week. Setting up a new poll for this week, remember there are Grim Dark Future armies in the poll. Because if you all vote for it, we will have Age of Fantasy fight Grim Dark Future. And once again, all of the models on the board, the Tree Men are by Clay Beast Designs, and the Cat Folk are by Philip Sins Miniatures. I'll link his Kickstarter again. I'm not sure if it's still going on. It might be done by now, but it is, a, it is an amazing deal, and I hope that anybody who wanted to jump on it did. So that will do it for us here in the garage. I hope you all have a very, I hope you all have lots of fun on the tabletop, and we'll see you next time.